this is the 2023 Audi A3 it has some wonderful features and I'm going to talk about some things I don't like about it first of all I love how the center screen is slightly angled towards the driver I also like this flat wheelbase the wheel buttons are laid out like the Audi of the last say five or six maybe seven years so if you drove any of those Audis you could easily figure out how to work these buttons the buttons down here are also quite similar a little bit more intuitive I think so just up to adjust it or press it in to to decrease the temperature they have taken away the actual the actual stick so this is the switch I would call it just move it up and down through the gears this is the handbrake and uh, the 12 volt slash cigarette lighter all right the center control which i think is it's an awesome feature of um, audis is that you can adjust it to different heights depending on how high you want it to stay up which is pretty cool all right let's get quickly to some things on the inside I don't particularly like. One, I, there's no backup camera on this model. This should be standard. The other business is the electronic seat control is gone. So you just have some manual. You're back to using um, levers to pull and yank on to, to move the seat forward. It does have this under thigh cushion. Let me get out of the way. By the way, check out that sunset. Pretty cool, huh? It does have this under thigh cushion so you can adjust it, put it out some more, or push it back in. As far as the exterior, it looks pretty clean. It looks really clean. But yeah, and this is the S line version. It looks pretty clean. The thing that's missing from sedans, most sedans these days, is that rear wiper. Because this is a hatchback, I think, I think that's what you call it, the rear wiper is, is on this. I think that's a good feature to have. Aside from that, I think it's a wonderful car. I mean, it's an Audi, so it's going to be built well, going to be built well and mostly well thought out. Just the absence of the rear view camera is what bugs me a little bit but I still think it's a great car and it drives really comfortably it does have all the driving assist functions such as warning you when you're about to go outside of your lane or if you're too close to the vehicle ahead and it beeps when you're close to something on the sides or at the back but I would give up some of that if I just had a rear view camera I think that should be a, a basic function of any car created in the recent it's the last five or so years, maybe 10 years. The other thing that's missing is when you're reversing on some models of Audis and you switch it to the right um, rear view mirror, it tilts down. This one does not. Again, I would get rid of some of these features and just put a rear view mirror in a rear view camera in the back that's what I would do as far as the infotainment system it's pretty basic I mean as far as what we expect from Audi or consistent I should say the Google Maps the maps that are that, are, that powers the the maps that comes with a car is not very good though I put a destination in and it was telling me I was, was going to get there in about, I don't know, 21 hours. When I used Google Maps, it gave me the right destination. And even though it was the exact same address, uh, and it gave me the right ETA of about 21 minutes. It would have been frustrating if I've driven for 30 minutes and, and only to find out I had a few more hours to go. It would have been terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, the other thing in here that's interesting is that you adjust the volume by um, making circles anti-clockwise or, or clockwise 
on, on here. So it's, there's no hard button anymore to adjust the volume. Don't know how I feel about that yet. Hasn't failed though, so I guess it's a good thing. And, oh, this is the other thing I don't particularly like. The only way to connect your phone, it's gonna be hard to see it now. The only way to connect your phone is if you have a USB Type-C. Can't see it right now, but maybe they can turn the flash on. There you go. USB Type-C, which is good, but what if you don't have one at hand? Almost everybody who has a phone would have a USB Type-A to USB-C. But this one does not have a way to connect your phone by USB Type-A on the USB-C. It does have wireless charging, which is fantastic. And if you look in the compartment, there's nothing up front at least. So that's a bummer. The climate control vents feel very premium though. You can hear that click. And it feels like it's made of metal. I'm not quite sure if it is, but it does feel that way. It feels heavy like it's well made. Um, these are still capacitive touch, which is good. I like that. No sunroof on this one, but it's fine. And I think that's the only thing that stands out. It just seems that they're moving away from knobs and switches to everything to be touchscreen, which I guess is good, but it's got to fiddle with things. If there was a knob, then it's easier to, to adjust the volume, adjust the temperature um, without having to take your eye off the road. But because it's touchscreen, now you have to look at the screen. It defeats the purpose of having hands-free devices. I think this menu system also has too many folders. Too many folders. Thankfully, I think you can customize this. I'm not sure. I haven't tried. But the ones that you would need, Android Auto CarPlay, would be right on the home screen. When you press the home key, it's going to be right there. If you want to do media, it's a little bit more complicated. By complicated, I mean it takes more steps than it should. Um, they've moved the hazard light in cars of earlier models. They would be up here, which I think is better, I think. And now it's down here. Thankfully, they're in, it's hard to confuse these because it has this big red light on here so you can tell that's the one you should press so you could pretty much find that uh, without taking your eye off the road 